It's 12 o'clock. Welcome to Taking Stock. It is November the 3rd, 2023. And uh, is a bull market on its way? Uh, by all means, uh, comment. What do you think? Is a bull market on the way? Uh, and if you could, like this and it gets uh, found by more people and share it. And don't forget, hit that subscribe button. And one more favor, download the Vox Markets app. It's free and you get RNSs straight to the front screen of your phone. By the way, there was a few delays in RNSs this morning. That wasn't Vox. It was um, the data service providers and it happened on many sites. Uh, but by all means, do that. Um, OK, uh, so so uh, bull market, is it on the way? This is my thoughts, OK? U.S. Federal Reserve kept interest rates on hold. Bank of England kept interest rates on hold. So they may be holding for longer, but where will interest rates go next? That's what the market's trying to work out. Uh, uh, many forecasters, many experts are saying they'll be coming down in 2024. And when will the market start to price this in? Because we have seen AIM rallying quite strongly. In fact, let me just uh, I say strongly can, compared to what we have seen uh, in the last uh, you know few months, few years, actually. Um, let's get the chart up here. I'll show you AIM. See where it's at at the moment. It's a, it's a little bounce at the bottom, but it's a good start. Um, so where are we at? 3.62% up. We are like 47% down uh, from the all-time high on the 6th of September, 2021. But is it a start of a market? Now, there's some telling factors here, right? What's the number one enemy the central banks have? It is inflation, isn't it? And even today, look at this. This news today, Maersk to cut 10,000 jobs in shipping. And they are the biggest, if not one of the biggest, on the biggest uh, shipping firms, three and a half thousand jobs. And they say uh, it's a, prices have dropped, demand is going down uh, and uh, led to congestion. Of course, COVID it ramped up. More recently, high inflation, rising interest rates have curbed spending and dampened demand. And if you know anything about, you know, one on one economics, if demand goes down, supply goes down, because prices go down, that's inflation being curbed right there. OK, that is inflation coming down. Plus, you have the fact that uh, uh, in October last year, we had a big rise in inflation. So that's baked in now. Andrew Bailey is saying inflation will come down below 5%. So it's the trajectory of inflation is coming down. When will the markets price this in? All right. Also, look at this. News of the day. UK services business is skirt with the recession. That's the October Purchasing Managers Index. It's below 50. That's in contraction. And it's been there for a while now. And so, of course, if you're in contraction, then there's not demand. There's lack of demand there. And in fact, new orders fell at the fastest pace this year, reflecting weak domestic demand, although overseas orders from the United States and the Middle East were strong. So we've got, you know, domestic demand is falling off a cliff. This is not good for business, but don't, you know, confuse the economy, the markets. The markets will try and price things in as much as they can. They're not super efficient. That's because you can make money. If they were efficient. You wouldn't be able to make money, but they're not efficient. And so I'm saying, are we at the start? I think seasonality will play into this. We'll have a nice, nice rally. And then maybe uh, towards the back end of uh, in, in, next year, uh, to the, sorry, start of next year, or Q1, Q2, we'll have a proper full blown rally. By the way, John isn't here. And uh, it's not about um, him having a day off. He has been affected by the storms, but he's had some storm damage. So he's dealing with that today. And that was dreadful. I don't know if you're okay where you are, but awful. I look at some of the Channel Islands, they've been moving cars, roofs have come off houses. That's phenomenal. Um, anyway, let's uh, I'll go look at some of the comments from yesterday. Let's just catch up here um, on yesterday. As Stephen is there, we're talking about, uh, you know, how many stocks in your portfolio. I argue that uh, you have too many. And of course, it's good for risk, but it's not very good with rewards. So it reduces risk and reward. And Stephen says, I do not dispute your figures, but would um, add that justify your approach with picking a 10 bagger. I have never had one in my life. And he asked people to ask you, have you ever had a 10, 10 bagger? This is not my point. Um, so Stephen says, we all know the sayings, you cannot beat the market and all boats float with the rising tide. So my risk averse approach uses the following logic. A single 10K investment will go to 11K on a 10% rise. A £10,000 investment spread across 10 stocks will also in aggregate increase to 11 uh, grand, uh, grand in each stock. Uh, so good question. How many 10 bags do you have? You're missing the point here. What I'm saying is what percentage exposure do you have to each stock? That's what I'm saying. Because essentially, like I said, if I go back to this chart here, uh, and uh, if you only have, I, I was using 
the best case scenario of a 10 bagger, if you only had 1% in that stock, total exposure value to your portfolio, you'd only get 10% rise. Now, if you got, you know, 10% rise, it wouldn't even figure. So, you know, what I'm saying is what exposure percentage wise to your total portfolio do you have? Because that means a lot on risk and reward, you know? So I'm just using the best case scenario, but the biggest upside you can get, pretty much 10 bag, and you'd only get 10% if you had a 1% exposure. So I'm saying you need to get more sort of exposure than that to get better risk and uh, a better reward. Um, well, less, less, more risk, essentially. Um, okay. Um, more chats. Uh, Nick B. Uh, Nick B says, uh, I'm still um, in homegrown FTSE 250 and small caps for my sins. My only FTSE 100 play, Ocado, always was a high beta. It was up 10% today. This was yesterday. I'm playing the 50% trade from five to six pound up to nine pound ish again, hopefully. It also seems to react to partner news like the big one with Kroger in the US, which is still trying to buy up another big supermarket rival, uh, Albertsons. It would be nice if it would be, uh, all happen in the next couple of months. That's like, I, I haven't had a look at the chart of uh, Ocado. In fact, there's a, there's a chat about charts. If you want, me and Paul did a live show today. Uh, we did talk about stocks. We argued about charts. And, oh, look at that down there. As you see, there's a downtrend here, and it has bounced nicely. Come back down. When you see, and obviously, when you see a very aggressive rally like that, it often isn't sustainable. It has to come down. What's nice here now, on the chart, is that it's got a, a, pretty much a, a, you know, a higher low. So maybe it'll rally from that. And in fact, one of the comments actually, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Peter, Justin, will you be taking Paul Hill's challenge with regards to demonstrating that you can not only predict the past? With your charting, but also the future, better than 50-50. Peter, in fact, it was my challenge. I said I will do it um, on on a couple of stocks. Yes, I will absolutely, um, because Paul's got it very good at fundamentals, and he, he doesn't tend to look at charts. And of course, in the last few months, it's, it's, it's gone against him. Because it's as simple as this, and I keep saying this. I'm not just looking at charts. Okay, uh, if you look at my uh, uh, spreadsheet, you know I use, I look at fundamental analysis, and then I add charts. To me, it's like this. Let's say you're an artist, okay, and you've got a box of pencils, all right? This is a very tenuous uh, sort of analogy. But, of course, you can start drawing with a black and white one. That's the outlines. That gives you everything, the shape, the colour, whatever it is. But why wouldn't you use the coloured ones as well? Just add a bit of colour, you know? Uh, a bit of context. Um, so, uh, let me just show you what I use. Uh, let me scroll down. Uh, where is it? Uh, I'll show you in a bit. But I use, um, I, I do use, you know, oh, there we are. This is my spreadsheet. And it's taken me many, 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 many months to get this going. So I put all the figures in, you know, on this here. Okay. That's interims. That's finals. And I come out with results. And I look at growth, value, health, efficiency. That is all fundamental analysis. Okay. All of it. And I also look at potential, which are forecast for the brokers. And if I don't get, say, 100% in a small cap in the next three years, I won't look at it pretty much unless they, unless they upgrade. But then momentum's there as well. You know, So that's the what and then the when. And then I look at how, as in portfolio management. So I do a lot of that altogether. So I'm just saying, in fact, look, let's look at, um, you know, we, we talked about um, PayPal. Paul bought PayPal. And I sign with it. That's a horrible downtrend. And um, and it's continued to go down, you know. And so these are the one of the stocks I'll be looking at. When would I buy this? Well, until I see some, you know, higher highs on the price. I mean, people are paying more for the stock, and it breaks previous lows. I'm not going to get into it. I'm not going to, you know, do it. So I will be looking at that and Bristol Myers. I think the other one. That's a horrible downtrend. You can see there. Even by if you remove that 50-day moving average, all 200-day moving average does is smooth out the price action. What is the price action? The price action is essentially, um, it shows the buying and selling action, the money supply, the money coming into the market. You can't deny that. It's basically economics. You know, who's buying, who's selling. If the selling outweighs the buying, the share price goes down. Simple as that. Okay. And I say, if you've got a fixed supply, that's an issued shares in, 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 in issue there, the shares in issue. And, um, you know, people are buying more than selling more, then it'll go up, net demand. Simple as that. And so you can do the fundamentals, then just look at the chart and think, okay, now, no riser in history 
will have a rise that doesn't go above the 200-day 200, 200 moving average. It has to go above that. And in fact, you see it here. And it's risen up, then it's really taken off and moved above. And in fact, previously on PayPal, like I said, you know, these were a series of uh, you know, higher highs there. And then it gapped up pretty much itself to that level there. And you can see there, it gapped up and did really well. And then all of a sudden, the trend starts breaking down. Why? Because you see the high there, nearly got above it, didn't there, broke down 200 day moving average. The trend is breaking down. Why? Net supply. That's it. There's more people selling than buying. And it keeps going down. So why not wait until there's net demand, until people are actually buying the stock more than selling it? That's why charts work. They're basically they're a pictorial you know, representation of the money flow. And money flow is everything. Everything. There's nothing more powerful than that. But you have to layer that on the back of you know, fundamental analysis. That's all I'm saying, ladies and gentlemen. I'm not saying the charts can tell the future. No, they can't. But they can tell you when people are buying at higher levels all the time consistently, which forms into a trend. So anyone who tells you charts and says, oh, I see this now going up to £1.80 on the chart. Rubbish. If you see that on Twitter and she's got to be able to do it, nonsense. They can't tell you that. All they can tell you is that you know, there's more now demand for the shares than supply if the share price is rising. So, And then you need fundamental analysis to see where it should go on a target price because, of course, that's based on profits, whatever, revenue, whatever, growth, all that stuff. OK, uh, that's all I'm saying there. So, yes, I will be taking Paul's um, uh, challenge up and uh, I know I'll win it. <laughs> uh, OK, uh, um, a couple of other comments here. Um, Riff is off, off. Said yesterday, someone did ask about um, how much money goes to the company when you issue, when when you buy shares, and I said nothing uh, because there's a obviously it's a certain amount of shares in issue, okay, and those shares that are traded are traded being buyers and sellers. In between that is a market maker; they make the market. And the difference is, if you want to, for example, houses are illiquid. If you want to buy a house, you've got to wait till the house comes up for sale. Now that's not the deal with shares. There's market makers who will, you know, hold shares. And if you want to buy different amounts of shares, you can buy them off them. That money doesn't go to the company. The only way it goes to the company is if they issue new shares. Okay. And people buy it. And that's why. And someone said, why do companies go public, become listed? Largely because they want to raise money. You know, um, sometimes it's because, uh, you know, uh, you know the, the founders want to exit and uh, cash in some of their shares. But they, you know, if they go from, say, for example, if you own a company, you're 100% owner of a company. And you can say list, say 50 percent. It depends on which exchange you're on. But uh, there's rules in London how much shares have to be listed to be a listed company. I think in America it's very low. In, in, uh, in fact, that's why I, uh, I think I think Saudi Aramco, they list about 5 percent of their shares. And that wasn't allowed in the UK. Uh, you have to list more than that. So the, the owners, Saudi Aramco, still hold the majority of shares there. But, you know, in, in, in the UK, you can list, I don't know what percentage is, but you know, 50, 60 percent. So eventually. You're raising money there. You're selling your shares at a higher level uh, to the public, you know. But it's to raise money. The aim, all share, for example, you know, a lot of companies on there are new companies, pre-revenue, loss making. So they are raising money to generate growth to develop the business, essentially. Uh, so there we are, um, Peter. Yes, I, I will be uh, taking up uh, Paul's um, you know, challenge. The challenge. If you haven't watched that, uh, by all means, have a look. Uh, okay, uh, Simon, bear market rally for me. Not had a recession yet. Ah, uh, yes, but oh, this is my thing, Simon. And again, it's about money flow, isn't it? Now, if the markets start a rally and they get beyond, say, twenty percent from the lows, which is a, a technical a bull market, will you still be saying they haven't had a recession yet, or do you pay more attention to the money flow? Because it's all about the money flow, you know. Don't worry, because I assume you're basing your judgment on historical analysis. It's not always the case. And if you look at like, the last major bear market we had, apart from the COVID dash for cash crash, 2009, things have changed massively even since then on volumes, trading uh, sets, all that kind of stuff. You know, people are going to trade fractional shares for no cost whatsoever on certain apps. It's changed hugely. So, But money flow is a true reflection of what's happening in the market. And that's why you should pay a bit more attention to um, uh, the thing there. Justin, uh, was that quick retaliation from my poll idea? Um, I didn't see you do a poll. Did you do a poll? Uh, I didn't ask the beginner question about companies getting money when you buy shares. I addressed uh, reasons why, why companies IPO. Okay. 
uh, Justin, uh, spend more time talking about charts than business evaluation. Uh, you know, I do on this because it, it's, I'll give you an example. I mean, I, I look through completely. When I'm researching a company, uh, fundamental is analysis straight away. I look at that first and foremost. I wouldn't even bother looking at the chart of a company if I didn't, it didn't stack up fundamentally. You know, and I give you an example today. For a long time, I don't know if it was on this or on, on my webinar with my investment club there, but someone said, Surface transforms. In fact, let's go to the front page of Vox here. Anyway, let's have a quick look at the, the markets today. I know yesterday was quite nice, but the uh, markets uh, footy down a tad. Ocado, there we are. That's up. BT Group. Oh, look at that. John would hate that, wouldn't he? Ocado's most hated share is above his own share. <laughs> uh, it's a bit of um, you know, Kingfisher there, DIY, Sainsbury's, Rent to Kill. Uh, what are the fallers here today? Intercontinental, Wilkes-Barre, Shell, Sage. Okay. Um, Aims up. Look at that. One of the, but Very similar, so FTSE 250 and, and Aims. They're domestic companies, but they obviously are larger, more mature companies uh, than Aims. Uh, but they're both domestically focused, I suppose. Um, okay. Let's have a look at the front page of Vox. I, I'll give you an example. Um, so I, I, I like the idea, the story of surface transform. Someone asked me this a while back. I said, I don't get the valuation here. I don't understand the valuation. So it's got to stack up fundamentally. Don't. It's almost like people think, because you look at charts, you look at fundamentals. No, 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 no. You know, okay, what to invest in is fundamentals. You know, what, when, how, okay? What to invest in is fundamentals. Most important thing of all, fundamentals. Absolutely. Growth, value, health, efficiency, and potential, you know? And then... You look at technicals. So if it stacks up on the fundamentals, you look at technicals, not the other way around. Otherwise, you're a trader and you just trade anything that moves. But then, you know, you could, if you do that, you could trade a company that's illiquid or, I mean, sort of unhealthy or, 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 or has no cash or what, and it could do a fundraise with 30% discount or something. So you've got to know what the balance sheet is like. If they're healthy that way and all that stuff. So service transforms today down 29%. There are 39, that's the first thing I look at, like I said recently. Th first thing I look at, 40 million market cap, okay? What justifies that valuation? That's what I look at. Why is it valued at that? What's the potential uh, you know, uh, valuation generation? Because you have to know, like I said, the old analogy I, I gave a while back, if you walk into an antique shop and you see something you think is a, is a Van Gogh or something like that, and it's, and you, it's got no price on it, you don't know if you can make money on it. Now, you can assume you can because it's, it's a Van Gogh in a little shop. But if you think it's going to get worth $2 million, a Van Gogh painting, you ask the lady behind the counter, how much is that painting? And she said, it's three million. You're not going to make money on it because I've sent the same it's, it's overvalued. If you don't sell it for two million, but if you've got, if she says 10 quid, there's loads of upside. So again, you know, looking at what the valuation is right now, you know, and where it should be and the potential valuation generation. That's very important. Uh, but this 40 million market cap. So straight away, I'll look at the last set of uh, results. They've got 100 million. Uh, it sounds good there. 100 million new business award from OEM, uh, original equipment manufacturer. Okay. Over how many years is that? You know, uh, but interim results. So I scrolled down here and thought, okay, the revenue of 3.3 million. That doesn't make sense to me. Thought, okay. If, if you if you just even put up to 5 million and do like uh, for half year and double that, because they grow the second half, that's 10 million for the year. And they're still valued even after this drop four times sales. That's high for a manufacturing business that's margins aren't huge. And so they've got 4.5 million cash and they're making a loss of 5 million a year. So it didn't stack up to me at all. And they came out today and uh, they did a trading update. And I still think, I don't think it's good value for money. I mean, as I say, the issue they've got here is they've had issues with their equipment. Okay. It's a failure in uh, equipment and uh, all that stuff taking more time. So what they need now, because they're loss making, they need more money. So they manage to get a loan, uh, but they can't have that for capital working purposes, only capital equipment. And so they say down here, they're going to have to raise money. And they did say they want, they want to build towards some big figures in here, 150 million sales capacity. But I did look at the broker forecast and it, it didn't seem, I, I still didn't get it. Um, but would the chart tell you that on its own? I don't know. But I don't look at the chart on its own, you know. So, uh, so, Let's look at the chart. SCE. Let's see if there's any telling. Sometimes, but in fact, you can see straight away. I don't say anything there, do I? I mean, what are we talking about there? There's a high. Didn't quite get above that. Low. 
lower highs all the way down, and now we dropped off a cliff. That is in no way an uptrend. And all I'm saying is avoid downtrends. That is a downtrend. Avoid them. So if you're just trading charts, you should know, you know to avoid downtrends or whatever you, you know, the trend is your friend. But then, of course, it's almost saying it's almost in step with the fundamentals, isn't it? And when they're up here, it's 70 pence a share. I remember seeing that the valuation is massive. I thought, what? I don't get that. I don't understand that. So there we are. So, I, you know, I do spend um, as much time. Uh, but literally, you can do a quick scan over fundamentals and realizing, are they good value? Do they have growth, first and foremost? And then look at, the other, you know, are they healthy? Are they efficient? And then uh, what's the potential going forward? So that's, you know, what I stack up. That's what I look at. Uh, hope that makes some sense, because I think some people just, you know, just look at the chart and that's it. I don't. Um, uh, okay. Listen. Uh, yes, I'm based on the chart, the inverted yield curve. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, mean, a, I, just, uh, I don't see a, a bull market until April 2024. We have now been flat, uh, so flat for over 18 months. Yeah, we have. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, um, it's... it's uh, it's hard work, isn't it? It's it's hard work, and and, and, and do you know what? I, I did say to Paul, worth watching that. If I'd paid more attention to charts, I would be in a better position now than I, I, you know, I was. You know, gangbusters I was doing from for two thousand nine up until about twenty twenty one, and I didn't really pay attention to trends, and I just stuck with the stories on stocks, and then it started the, the wheels came off a bit. I'm still up nicely, but not compared to you know, where I could have been. So it's annoying that I didn't pay more attention to charts because there were some obvious signs, some obvious signs. And if I just paid attention to the S&P 500 and maybe the aim over here, you could have seen the trend was breaking down. Uh, and that's, a, you know, it's it's a it's a very good... Um, and in fact, hindsight's a wonderful thing, but you could just say, if you use it, you know, in fact, that's the aim all shape, for example, you know? Uh, and and if, if you'd you know, just paid attention to that, the aim all shape, Look at that. After COVID dash for cash crash from 585, it shot up to, you know, 1300. And, you know, it hadn't touched, touched that, you know, hadn't touched that. In fact, the, 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 the markets were rolling over before that. And then we had fake stimulus come in from the central banks and pumped the markets right up. Look at that rise. That's a natural rise, you know. And then all of a sudden it started breaking down. You could see there straight away, you know, a series of higher lows. Why does that happen? Think about why it happens. So just think, okay, high lows. Why does it happen? You know, it happens because it rises and bigger sellers come in. It comes up again, tries to rise again. Sellers are, are killing the, the buyers, essentially. And you realize, hang on a sec, I'm paddling against the current here. Anyway, uh, so there we are. Um, so let's look at the front page of Vox. Here we are. Uh, let's go on. Zoo Digital. They were doing very well, weren't they? So uh, Victor's covered Zoo. Uh, they were gangbusters again. I thought a little bit overvalued at the time. Then, um, you know, they've come up with a profit warning. That's for the chart there. But uh, they've opened a place in, where's it by? Uh, uh, hmm. Yeah, look at that. They really had a cracking rally, even in the bear market. From 2020, 51 pence, two quid. And then a gap down. Oop, uh-oh. Um, so what are they doing? They opened a place, I think, in uh, in India, aren't they? Um so, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, listen, I do go through fundamentals, but I won't do them too much on here because I think looking at the charts are better than looking at figures on a, on a, on a document, essentially. Um, so it's worth keeping an eye on that, I think, Zoo, because they're taking a bit of a hammer in. Uh, but what was their latest, um, what was their latest updates, the forecast? Uh, 43 million market cap. Um, so directors are buying. Are they half years also come out? When are they come out? It'd be worth seeing these, actually. Uh, 30th of November, so end of this, this month, so we're looking at that. Um, it's like final results for the year. What's it like? Uh, twenty percent goes ninety million, and three percent sales. Okay, a bit dark. Fifteen point five, margin seventeen. Not bad, you know. But then it's, it's top will fall off a cliff. But um, what are they at with the market cap? Forty three. Okay. Uh, okay. Zoo Digital. Any stocks you want to look at? Let me know. If you've seen any news today, please let me know. Um, Serum near Peyton Grant in Japan, uh, the clinical biostage company. SAR's ticker there, of course, and uh, eight, up 8% 8 a day. In fact, one of the rises here. Um, but they're looking at, uh, you know, uh, cancer and all that stuff. Um, yeah, but it's, you know, some pat patents in Japan, hopefully, and in China. Um, 
It's sort of SARS. There's a lot of companies been hit recently. Um, yeah. It's, 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 it's odd looking at how many stocks are in downtrends. And that is like a bear market, isn't it? They all are pretty much. There's very few stocks in uptrends um, at the moment. Let's look at the most followed, uh, most read. So Eurasia Mining, exercise of options. That went through a torrid time. A friend of mine said a friend of his, or a guy he works with, kept telling him to buy these shares. And a friend of mine, it was not the guy, he's not really into stocks and shares. He said, keep, buy, keep buying these Eurasia Minings. And it's got one of those kinds of followings that you know, goes beyond the normal retail investor. It gets talked about you know, by friends and work and all that stuff. And this guy had a big chunk of his money in this before the Ukraine invasion. And I think uh, he's sitting happy now. And that's the trouble sometimes. When you start getting invested in shares, um, you tend to go over, you know, not aware of how you should allocate your money in portfolio management. But uh, it's Eurasia, Eurasia, uh, Eurasia mining. Yeah, 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 look at that. And the thing is up here, you're talking about sort of, uh, it's going to make me rich. But weren't they like, a, you know, it's quite a big market cap then anyway. Uh, but what are they at now? Still 62 million. Wow. And they've obviously had problems in, um, you know, in Russia and stuff. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's crazy how the hype gets passed around uh, on these companies. Um, okay, um, what is it? What else is there? Is Britain Gold another one that you know, rose massively, but the first phase of drilling completed in Patson South project, they say, and uh, so please the results. Uh, the completion of this program successfully achieved a minimum commitment from our Rio Tinto exploration farming and joint venture agreement more than a year ahead of the 31st December 2024 deadline. You know, a nice picture there, tenements. Um, they, they, the chart was looking better on these recently. I, I haven't really, uh, let's have a look. Um, there we are. I'm just looking at this is it's well followed stock. Like I said it's done 2400 percent, you know, in 375 days in that area there. So I think there's a lot of talk about takeout, take, take over. But even now, um, you can see, you know, it's had a downtrend, massive downtrend. I put some lines on it to see just where the channels are. But now it's broken up. Look, these are these are these are the previous, you know, highs, and for some reason it's breaking up here. So I'm not saying that's the start of a trend yet; it could come back down. But once you start getting a series of high lows, then maybe it's on the way back up. You can see there it broke down this previous support there at seven and a half pence. Broke down there, broke back up. So uh, it's you could say probably that's the bottom. Will it need to go sideways? Probably, uh, but that's probably a bottom there. So grit and gold. Um, Argo again. Today, oh, Upland is the next one. Oh, finally, a nice rise in Upland after a big sell off. Sorry, I'm going to sneeze. And they talked about uh, the progress here on the joint technical study on block SK334. And uh, nice picture here of what's been achieved. So they got, yeah, yeah. Um, conceptual engineering completed. Final development plan completed. Uh, high level cost estimates. Um, and they go down and they show, of course, the progress here in the chart there. And uh, it's still, you know, what happened here? It's ridiculous. It shouldn't allowed, shouldn't be allowed to happen. You know, check should have been done. But the validity of that 14 pence bid turns out it was just someone sending an email, maybe. I don't, I don't know how it got through. I don't know how it actually be fair. But um, look at that. That's what can happen, though, on, you know, micro cap, nano cap stocks when you get a, a, a bit of a rumor, a bit of circulation going around. And um, I'm not going to keep reiterating why the chart is good here, but you can see, you know, in how many days it didn't break that level and all of a sudden it pumped up. Why? I don't know. In this, in this, in this respect, I know it's rumor. They went berserk on that news. So um, again, it's money flow. It's money flow into it. Why is it? I mean, you can't. Even, some people just trade on that, but um, I wouldn't. Um, there we are. Uh, okay. Um, there we are. So look. Uh, I've lived by the rule that no matter how much I like the company and how cheap it is, I will never buy it below a 200-day moving average. Uh, and that has saved me many times. Thank you, Dane. Yes. There's no, there's, no, there's no magic in that. Like I said, it's all charts are on money flow, you know? So you can pay attention to the money flow. And like I said, and if, if it comes to the basics, just avoid a downtrend. Avoid a downtrend because you can be sitting on a company that looked cheap and can get cheaper and cheaper and cheaper. And if you're happy, you know, sitting on a paper loss for a long time, fine. I don't like it. I feel the pain. 
<laughs> so I've decided I'm not going to do that. I'm going to time my capital allocation a bit better. That's all. The big money knows more than retail money does and the move the market. Uh, we should follow the big money, i.e. the trend. Yeah. No, I agree with you. Uh, absolutely. And it is, you know, when the big money comes in, um, you know, it moves the markets there. Um, hard factory, you said. Uh, let me just quickly look at the, the others. Uh, share screen. Uh, Argo blockchain. Oh, how are they doing Argo? They're down 2.74%. But how much do they mine? They, I do still find Bitcoin fascinating. That's like, you know, not regulated. It's like a money thing. But, you know, in this world where it's a money source, it's not really money, is it? You know, I mean, just people trading it for money, aren't they? To make money. It's, it's, it's no use, is it? Does anyone use it for anything apart from trading? And you think, why isn't that regulated? In fact, the crypto king is, is going to jail, isn't he? Sam Bankman Freed. Uh, we'll cover that in a bit. But um, so anyway, uh, 4.6. I mean, you know, store of value, some would say. Uh, we'll see. Uh, during the month of October, company mined 143 Bitcoin or Bitcoin equivalents. Uh, what is that? The company is able to increase its daily Bitcoin production in October by 2% compared to prior years. Okay. Uh, mining revenue, 4.26 million, an increase of, uh, so let's say, 5 million times 12, 60 million. Uh, average 60 million. What's the market cap here? I know they've got a lot of debt now, haven't they? Um, but 40 million. Well, that's, that's dollars to pounds. So one-time sales, but they've got debt. So that would make them, on an enterprise value, would make them more expensive than that. Um, okay. Um, pull bag, they present uh, the, the thing at the hematology annual meeting there. Potential treatment for hyperinflammation associated with cytokine release syndrome. Um, what is the child like? Is that? I do like the guys at pull bag. I've checked them quite a lot. And they're very hard working. That's that's very interesting here. I mean, you see this is dipping below there uh, a little bit on that news. We have a series of lower highs, and that support level is temporarily giving way. It doesn't mean, you know, unless you start to see like a, a couple of more lows, uh, it can sort of, you know, punch back up. But, um, yeah, it's dipping down a little bit on that. Uh, I don't know why, why that would happen. What's Poolbeg's 32 million market cap? Okay. Um, uh, I'll look at card factory a bit. Anything else here? Look at this. Uh, oh, Safe Style is now going to be a cash shell. So, if any of you fancy, um, you know, reversing your business into that, there we are. There's one for you. Uh, CMA, I don't know, there's no news on any of these. I'm checking, they're not, they're not rising on news. Um, there is, uh, boom again, it's had a nice little um jump here. And let's have a look at this. If it, it, downtrend of stocks. It's been very painful for um, investors. That's interesting, isn't it? Um, that's probably 50 day. A shorter... Where's my 50? Now, I'm not saying that start of an uptrend. All I'm saying is, if you look at what's happened previously, then, you know, this time here, it broke the 50 day moving average, okay? Went up, and then came back down and broke down below it. Didn't ever break the 200 day moving average. Okay, but what you want is now previous highs where it's at. You know, you want to get above that as a starting point, pretty much. But it's, it's a nice sort of support there around about 130. So this may be the bottom in audio boom. Maybe. We don't know that yet. It could go down further. But if it breaks the new highs here, these new highs, and gets it back in this range, I'd say it's a good chance, you know, because essentially have sellers exhausted because all you need is a bit of buying power and if all sellers are exhausted it'll take the price up it's just just you know money action money flow money flow um but they did do those they come up with news in there recently on a uh, one billion advertising impressions reached which is good news uh and in fact they do say the digital advertising market is stabilizing and in fact google's um was up 10 percent uh, in the last quarter on the previous quarter so maybe digital advertising is it and in fact looking at um you know, one of the sort of Worcester Childs over here, future PLC. As you can see here, massive downtrend. CEO, you know, bought some shares in 888. And if you don't know what they do, they own like 200 sort of brands and they largely rely on subscriptions and digital advertising. Um, excellent growth they've had. And the CEO, of course, stood, stood down a while back. New guy came in, quite like him. But that there, if it, you know, it gets above this, it, that previously, it hasn't been above sort of 960 at all and the close above that so close above that would be nice a gap up there and a gap and it's close to 200 moving average so 
that may be, you know, worth thinking. But also, wait, I, I, I personally now wait until I think the results are out. Um, when are those futures results out? Um, but it's one of the you know stars of the stock market. They're buying back shares as well, which will help. Uh, or trading update, you know. Um, 7th of December, what have we had? Oh, it was a month away yet. Maybe it'll rise towards that. You can that can happen because they did say there that, um, in line with expectations, it's a mixed bag though. So, trading updates, of course, sometimes it show you, you know, um, not what's and all, they reveal what they want to reveal. You know, there's highlights essentially. It's like, like I said, I said with John recently, it's like showing, you know, um, online, uh, what's it called, uh, real estate or state agents, they show all the nice pictures, they don't show. The actual pictures, you know, to get that, to get the final results of a come of a house you're looking at, you have to go to the house and look actually around it. Uh, so trading updates are like that. They're like the online version of an estate agent showing you the best parts of a house. So it's probably worth maybe rally towards that uh, that final results and then and then come off a little bit when you see maybe the debt because they've got a bit of debt. Uh, so it's worth waiting for that. But if they're improving, it'll go higher, you know. Um, okay. Uh, uh, what else have we got there? Uh, future, uh, oh, blockchain. Uh, let's look at Card Factory. I didn't look at Card Factory on, um, they came up with results, didn't they? And, and um, uh, additional listing, and then it came off a little bit, didn't it? So, what's the, what's the 350 million market cap? Um, interim results. There we are. So, decent, um, growth for that. So, yeah, like for like growth is good. Well, I, I haven't got time to look into the fundamentals here. I haven't covered it previously. Uh, but let's look at the chart here. So I know it's was stumbling at the previous high. Uh, card factory. It was a bit of a mess. Well, it's, it's my fault. It's messy, but I don't think too much there. Uh, yeah. So you can see the previous highs, it's not, it, it's, it's failed at that, you know, but it's, it's trying to rally a bit. And uh, will this be a lower high? That's what you need to look at. And they said, you know, it hasn't really breached that 200 day moving average to so push, push through it up here. And that was back in November 2022. So a, a year ago, nice trend. Look at the gap here between the 200 day moving average and that. They touched there. Uh oh. Then gapped up on news. That's good. So we'll have to see. I mean, if you get sort of, you know, it, it fails to get above this level now and rise down, that's, that's then, you know, a lower high. So maybe not good, but maybe it just needs a rally. I mean, you know, maybe it's consolidated. It may have to go sideways for a while. Who knows? But um, yeah. So a wait and see. Uh, there we are. Um, uh, anything else you want to uh, chat to chat to chat to chat to about? Uh, it can't find me. So that's that. Is there any other news I saw? It wasn't that many RSs that day. Um, I'm just looking at. Let's go to the front page. Just looking at the. Uh, 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 most followed, the riders, uh, Guild, Corsair, Gfinity. Wow, really? That's a, that's a burn there. Even Horizonte is uh, is uh, is rising. The raise is down 34, 37%. Wow. Um, okay. Yeah. All the followers there. Okay. Um, let me know if you want to think quickly. I'm just going to do one more final thing. I've covered the, the, um, the the news. Hopefully, John's back Monday. He's dealing with storm damage, um, as opposed to just sloping off, staying out tonight. John, stop out. Crypto King Sam Bankman Freed faces jail. I, I was listening to uh, Radio Five Live this morning, and um, a lady came on a correspondent saying he took the stand, and defence judges and lawyers never say you take the stand. No, because it can take you apart. If they do take you apart, that's it. And the prosecution apparently in their summing up said, if you actually listen to what Sam Bankman Free said, you'll convict him. Because he explained what he did was fraud. <laughs> There's no, no you know, final nail in the coffin bigger than that one. Uh, but look at that. Cryptocurrency firm was once valued at 32 billion when it went bankrupt in November last year. Eight billion in customer funds went was missing. Wow. You still wonder how this can happen in this day and age. I suppose in the wild west of crypto, it still can happen because people still believe miracles can happen, you know, when it's not regulated. It's, you know, you see these kind of things on Netflix documentaries of, of yesteryear uh, and, and you think, how does this still happen? You know, how do people get away with this still? But uh, very interesting. But he now faces decades in jail. Well, hopefully, looking on the positive side, He's lived a life, you know, that many wouldn't have lived. I mean, lived many lifetime, lifetimes 
on that money. And so now he's going to get locked up. So uh, maybe not living too fast is the answer. Uh, who knows? Uh, anyway, thank you very much for watching. I've been just rabbiting on to myself at the moment. I've said it's, it's like it's like um, being uh, at home with my dog. My wife's away, going on holidays uh, with my son, younger son. And uh, I'm talking to my dog most of the day. So it's a bit like that. It's an extension of that. <laughs> I mean, it's talking to myself. Uh, but thank you very much for watching. And uh, by all means, um, what's your methodology of selling shares? Oh, okay. It's a very good one, actually. Um, yeah. And I've, I've learned this. I've messed up several times on selling shares. Uh, what is your methodology for selling shares? Do you top slice or have a system? Oh, I've always got a system. <laughs> it's just about refining them. My thoughts are this, right? If you are in a company and you're in profit, for example, I mean, the, the way I scale in, I, I keep, when I initially scale in the companies, it's quite small. So if it goes wrong, my loss is, is, is wrong, you know? And if it's just a technical thing, fair enough. Uh, so I don't go big. So I literally do, you know, 3% of total portfolio value. And if, if it goes down by 20%, you know. So if, uh, on, on round, round figures, for example, let's say you uh, got a hundred thousand pound portfolio, and you put 3% initial total portfolio as three grand. Now, if you go down 20%, that's what, 600 pound down of 100,000. But you can lose up to three grand if it goes bust. So start small. But if you're in profit on something, and it has the potential, like I said, I only tend to invest in companies that has you know big potential, and you're up on something, then don't sell straight away. But you know, limit your downside so you'll never make a loss. So you know, cover off that base so you'll never. And this is this is I've learned this from taking a loss when I've been up on stocks. So I'd say, limit the downside, don't limit the upside. If you don't know what's coming, it, a big buy come in and take up another 20, 30, 40 percent. You know, they could land a contract or something like that. They'll take up 100 percent. Now, if you top start top slicing that, you're limiting your upside. But I would limit your downside. The nirvana of any investment, of course, is all about risk and reward. But the ultimate goal in any investment is that a risk-free investment. So if you literally like twenty percent up, and you just put a stop, stop loss in, you know, just above your, where you bought in, you can never lose on that. You can never lose money. That then remo removes the risk part of the equation from the risk reward. It's only a reward for you. That's all it is. That's the ultimate goal in any investment. If someone said to you, um, I've got an investment for you, there's no risk. First of all, you wouldn't believe them. But you can achieve that by putting a stop loss in just above your, you know, your, your, your buy price if you're in profit. So I wouldn't limit the upside because upside, you know, the downside is 100%. Upside is multiples of that if you're in certain stocks. So, you know, uh, never limit the upside. Um, but it's all about having discipline. I, I've sold shares before where, and then they've gone on to do multi-bags. And I think, why did I do that? Why did I do that? Uh, but yeah, there you are. Um, thank you very much for that. Uh, by the way, uh, the bond market starts when John buys. Where is he, by the way? Yeah, Lemon Physical. Like I said, he's had storm damage. Um, not him. I think his house or where he lives. Or, uh, so they're sorting that out. Um, there we are. So hopefully he'll be sorted that out by Monday and he'll be back. The bull mark, well, John's going to wear a Santa hat when the bull market starts. Uh, thanks for watching. Don't forget, if you can, uh, hit that like, like a subscribe button as well. It's very important to us to know how we're doing uh, subscribing. And if you want to download the Vox Marcus app, uh, it'd be much appreciated. It's free and you get, um, you know, nothing's charged. You don't get charged for anything. You know, even when you get delivered RSS, you know, via notification, that's free as well. So uh, by all means, do that. Cheers. Have a nice weekend, everyone. And uh, speak next week. Bye-bye-bye. Bye-bye-bye. Bye-bye.